Hello and welcome to Fair Falcon Predictions. And um, I apologize if this video is not as good or it's a little worse than what the original one was because I accidentally deleted the file because I'm not that bright. So we're just going to try and wrap this through very quickly because it won't be a super exciting primary. Frankly, the Alaska primary will be more exciting than this. It's just in combination with their new system, which is kind of like... Uh, the California primary and uh, main primary system had a child together. Um, it's just not something I know a lot about, and I don't know a lot about this race either, but um, I know even less about that, so <clears throat> we'll take a stab at this, but I will definitely be watching that race more, as this one in particular, it's not as interesting because it was at first, but now we pretty much know how this thing is going to go. So without further ado, let's hop into this. So taking a look at the house race right here, um, we need a baseline and that baseline comes from somewhere. And usually you would do it from 2020, 2018, 2016, the past primary elections in the state of Wyoming, but those are not going to be a super representative of what is going to happen this time because Liz Cheney is headed for a royal trouncing to put it actually quite lightly and the thing with that when you have a royal trouncing it doesn't align with the previous elections hardly so frankly the presidential election of 2020 the general election is more in alignment with how this thing is probably going to go so more on that in a little bit but scrolling down this article it's a great way to kind of just get a summary of this uh the two main carry <laughs> Sorry, um, I meant to say candidates instead of Harriers, but um, Miss Higman and Liz Cheney, these are the two main candidates for the primary. I don't know why this guy's on here. He's not any bigger than these other nobodies on here as well, and I hope I pronounced Hageman correctly, but uh, you can always correct me if I'm wrong. So um, scrolling down, of course, we look at the endorsement map right here, and it is quite wild to put it Quite mildly nobody besides adam kinzinger in terms of congress people who are active is endorsing liz cheney and frankly i will be blunt as you know from my previous videos i do not like either cheney or kinzinger they are chicken hawks they are not even war hawks like john mccain and um frankly if i could push a button and make them all lose i would but that's not a thing so i would rather have the trump endorse you lose in this case but um this whole endorsement map speaks volumes down here kevin mccarthy he's even endorsed hageman and the other leadership people down here such as scalise as well others who are active whether they're gunning for an administration position later for the next gop president or house leadership people Pete Stauber up here. These guys, I mean, they endorsed JHB, who recently lost. They endorsed Dan Newhouse. And uh, rumor has it from one of my buddies that Kevin McCarthy stuck up for a seatmate, Valadeo, to the north who voted for impeachment, and he begged Trump to stay out of it. And what is known for a fact is Trump did stay out of it. So this is rather shattering that these people are willing to go to bat for the other impeachment, 9 and uh, Cheney's 10, but they're not willing to go to bat for Cheney. And part of it is because she didn't only vote to impeach Trump, she's really vocal about it. And these other guys, especially Valadeo, really kind of stayed quiet about it afterwards. And this is one reason why endorsement list happened the way it did. But in terms of funding, obviously Liz is raising more money from out of state and vice versa, although both are taking huge amounts of PAC money. And there's quite a bit of personal donations, but it's obviously more PAC money and that's how it usually is. So nothing much to see here. There's just the one common thing down to see here. The polling, I do expect it to be rather accurate, and I didn't know exactly how I would be uh, splitting undecided, so I kind of just split it down the middle, and as I said, I don't know a ton about this race, and usually that wouldn't be a great idea, but there are not a lot of undecideds, and it is going down with time as well, so I don't think we're going to screw up too much on that front, but I could be wrong, and that's okay. We stay humble here. Um, 
Nothing really of interest to note here besides Anthony Bouchard. Uh, this guy was a favorite to win at one point. And as you know, Wyoming is a plurality state like most of the state. It doesn't have a runoff. It doesn't have rank choice and all that stuff. It doesn't even have like a 40% threshold requirement or something like this. So Bouchard is a state senator from the Cheyenne suburbs. And he was in there, and I, I don't think, don't quote me exactly, but I don't think Hageman was even in when he was ahead. But uh, let's just say some Roy Moore type stuff came out, and it just absolutely crashed from there. So yeah, there's not too much more here. And uh, the Democratic uh, primary right here. Now, as much as I don't like Liz Cheney, I am a proponent for the system of voting for the lesser evil i really have to hold my breath for that but you know i voted in every single election that i've been eligible to vote in which is 13 at this point including the municipal ones that have like six percent turnout and one of the things with this is liz cheney she's cooked she maybe has a two percent chance of actually winning her nomination but something to watch is if you combine her votes with the amount of people who voted in the Democratic primary, will that exceed Harriet Hageman? My guess is probably not. I haven't done a Democratic map or tally, but this is something to consider. And there is probably a 25 or 30 percent chance of happening. And if this is to happen, it is a stain on the Democratic Party of Wyoming for sure. They're pretty much just a green party for all intents and purposes here. But the Democrats will nominate Lynette Graybull again, Native American, and she was the Democratic nominee against Cheney last time. But with that, there's not too much more to add here in terms of that. Obviously, solid R going up again. And without further ado, we will go to the actual prediction itself. Sorry about all my memes up there. And um, here it is. As you can see, we just edited it like 52 minutes ago or so, but... This is a race where I do expect Hageman to get 60% and Cheney to get roughly 33% and the other minor candidates lopping up some 7% or so of the vote. Now, one of the things with this is that this will be a high turnout primary higher than 2018 or 2020. And one of the things with my previous prediction record is I generally underestimate primary turnout. So we went a little go big or go home in this scenario, as you may say, and we'll just watch and see what happens. But in regards to this whole primary, I do think that the turnout will be a little lower and Liz will get a little less of the vote than uh, she probably would have several weeks ago. And this is going to be due to Democrats staying home a little bit more because they have been reminded that she is still a Trumpist besides voting to impeach him. And we are talking ideology here in regards to Roe versus Wade and gun control matters. So I do think this knocked Liz down a few points and this will be something that is detrimental to her, but it's not really to matter in the long term. But Another interesting thing for me, at least, and us nerds, what percentage of the vote if this primary that Liz is going to rack up are people who voted for Biden? And then what percentage of the votes that Liz gets in this primary will go to Hageman in the general? Now, these are things that probably won't be fully answered, but a lot of people smarter than myself will extrapolate on these things pretty well, I might add over the next months, and it will be something that will interest me, and I'll probably read quite a bit on that and maybe get back to you. But in terms of the actual map itself, I'm not completely confident in a lot of things, but there's some areas of the state where I'm even a little less confident than average. So up here in this northeastern part of the state, especially Campbell County, Hageman could underperform due to one of the smaller candidates having a following there. I saw him in the local newspapers for my research like 19 years ago or so. And so this wouldn't be to Liz overperforming, but rather other factors and the other parts of the state. There are only a couple others really that are worth mentioning. Teton and Albany counties. I do expect Cheney to win those, but she could lose it. It wouldn't surprise me at all. It's dependent on Democratic primary voters 
who would otherwise be there coming to bail her out and save her in those two places. And the last part that I want to touch on is this Fremont and Sweetwater area. Actually, there's one more I want to touch on after this. My apologies. We have the Cheyenne, Arapahoe, Shoshone, those sort of reservations on the area. And they are not very swingy except for the 2020 general. They kind of were for the presidential, but it's kind of aside the point for this video. But um, Sheridan County, it could be a little redder than this. Park, it is red by Wyoming standards, obviously, and it is red. But it is trending bluer because the Jackson Hole suburbs or suburbs by Wyoming standards, that is, are slowly bleeding into park. And so I do expect Liz to not only outrun Biden here, but in the state overall, as you can see with the combined totals. And Casper, Wyoming, generally Cheney does well in this area, except for 2016. But I do think I will go out on a limb and at least give her a few points better than even what she will do in the rest of the state compared to the Biden swings in Natrona County, which is that. And Moving on to the presidential baseline, we'll just touch on this briefly. Um, this does show the swings. I did pull it up for this part of the video. I didn't do it in the original recording, but we will get to it here. And you can see that the shifts in these areas, Park County, it did swing a little more democratic compared to the counties around it, such as Bighorn and Washakie. So, I do expect these sort of areas to continue to go down that path. Wyoming is a rather trend neutral state, and this is obviously by Wyoming standards, but you can obviously still see the urban to rural divide in the state, and that will be at play. So it's really hard to believe that uh, these polls are closing in 36-ish hours, and this is obviously mountain time, but we're central time here, so we're just gonna do things approximately. And, of course, the polls are opening in 24-ish hours, so I know I'll be excited. Most of you will probably be excited if the few of you who are watching this video are subscribed. And if you are into this as much as I am, I hope the time passes for you between now and the times we get the results if you're as giddy about these things as me. So, uh, without further ado, I think that's pretty much it for today. And uh, stay tuned. We're going to have some more Senate and governor predictions, some in depth later in regards to this channel within the next few days. And I will not be live streaming the election results, but that is something that can definitely come in later in the channel. But uh, that'll do for now, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.